Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the Director of Training here with .NET New Corporation. In this brief video, we're going to talk about the .NET Nuke user profile and give you an overview of the profile as it relates to administrators or admin users on your .NET Nuke website. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the profile, show you where you can get to the point where you can manage the required uh, and available profile fields. We'll talk about creating those profile fields and how you can control whether users can, can fill those fields out or not. So we're going to switch over here to a clean .NET Nuke version 5.6.1 instance, and we'll just log in as the administrator account. Now managing the profile information for a .NET Nuke website is going to be done by navigating to the admin user accounts page, which you can find from the admin menu or within the admin tab of the control panel. Now from the user accounts page, we can see that we have a list of the existing users, and if we want to go in and, and edit or manage the users, we can do so from here. But we also have an option to manage profile properties, which we'll find within our actions menu, and if your container supports it, also within action buttons. And we'll see in the action menu there, manage profile properties. Now if we navigate to that page, this is going to take you to the page that lists off all of the default profile properties within .NET Nuke. And you can see there's a variety of those here, beginning with name information, address, contact info, and then finally some preferences for our website. Now within this page, we can manage the, the sort order of these profile fields. We can move things up or down using the arrows. Here directly, we can also edit or delete existing profile properties. You can see there are a couple of those that we're unable to delete, being first name and last name, and then the time zone and preferred locale. Those are required profile properties for .NET Nuke. We get a column here that shows the name of the, the profile property, a category, and currently category is not used within DNN. And then we have a data type. So within each profile property, you can choose what type of data is going to go into that profile property how long that data should be, and then if there's a default value or validation expression. Now off to the right, we have a default visibility. And when, what this allows is users can actually control which of their profile information is visible to all users, meaning anyone visiting the website, members only, meaning only registered users on your website, and then admin only, meaning only administrators on the site. And we'll see how users can manage that in a future video when we talk about the user profile management. Now off to the right then, we have a required column and a visible column. Well, the required column, as you can see, is not currently checked, but if we wanted to require any of these specific fields, we could check the item next to that field. And then everything is currently visible. So we can control which fields are visible. That means which fields the user themselves who are updating their profile can actually see. So we could restrict users to see only certain profile fields. Now, from the Manage Profile Properties page, we can go to the Actions menu and we can actually add additional profile properties. So if we choose that Add New Profile Property option, it's going to take us to an interface to create our property. Now, when we go through the process of creating a property, we need to give it a name. Now, typically, you're going to create the name without any spaces. So I'm just going to call this one Custom Property. Now we can choose what type of field it's going to be, and you can see in the drop-down list we have a variety of different types. We'll just make this one a text box for now. Now we can go ahead and associate it with a category. For now, we'll just create a category called Custom, and then we can set the length. If we want to set it to anything that has a limit, we would change that value from zero to some number. So let's say we wanted to make this one have a max length of 10 characters. We could also define a default value and if we wanted to validate the field, validate the information a user provided, then we could provide a regular expression here that would do that validation. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this property required and I'm going to make it visible. That means that when a user goes to log in for the first time using the default settings of .NET Nuke, it's going to prompt them to update their profile information to pro provide this custom property. We'll also make it visible. Now you want to be careful if you're using required and visible options, because if you make something required, yet you don't make it visible, the users will not actually see that profile property and they will not be able to update their profile. And if you have it required, then they're not going to be able to move past that profile screen because it's required yet not accessible. And then at the bottom here, we have the default visibility. We can control where uh, or sorry, we can set the default visibility for this particular profile property. Users themselves can then choose 
to display this or not, depending on which option they'd like. So if we go ahead and click on next, that's going to create that profile property and we're going to be taken to a screen then that will allow us to customize the, la the language localization for this profile property. So we can define the name of that property now. And I called it custom property before. Now we're going to call it custom property with a space. And I'll remove the ER because it's not customer. Now we can also provide some help text associated with this property. So I'll just type something in there. And then we can define the required error message or validation message and then the category name localization as well. Now if we go ahead and save the localized text, that's going to save a localized version of our property name. What that would allow us to do is to create different language associations for this property. So we could have a Spanish version and an English version and a French version if we had multiple languages on our portal. So I'm now going to go ahead and return to the profile property list. That'll take us back to the page that lists off all of the profile properties. And what we'll find now is we're going to have that new profile property listed on that page. So we can see here at the top of the list that custom property option is now available. And it is marked as required and it is marked as visible. Now we can go through and add additional properties as we like. We can make them required or not. And what this is going to do now with the default settings in .NET Nuke is when someone logs in for the first time or logs in, they're going to be prompted to update their profile. And that's because of another setting that we can, we can access from the user accounts page. So if I go ahead and navigate back to the user accounts page, we'll take a look at where we can control that setting. So from the actions menu on the user accounts page is a user settings option. Now we'll cover most of the information on the user settings page in a future video. But for now, if we go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom, the final or the third to last property here is require a valid profile for registration, which is set to false. And then the next one require a valid profile for login. Well, between those two, basically what that means is when someone in the default form, when someone logs in for the first time, they're going to be prompted to update their profile for any fields that are required. Now, if we wanted to make them fill out those fields during the registration process, we would set the other option to true as well. That would mean that in order to create an account on the website, they would have to fill in that custom property attribute. We'll go ahead and leave it as is for now and click on cancel. Now, in a future video, we're going to show you how to go through as a user and what they see from their profile properties and how they can go through and customize and control the visibility on the options. In the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page. You can find it under the resources tab on .NET Nuke.com or by using the shortcut URL here. There you'll find a variety of free videos as well as information about our instructor-led training and our custom online and on-site offerings. Again, this was Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.